This is the Kendallville Mall and we're with the basement bicycle shop in Weibull's Paint and these guys are going to tell us how they take junk and make it into motorcycles like the ones in the front window on Main Street. Dave? I'm Dave Hunter. I'm a Kendallville resident and I run Parkview Noble Hospital. I'm John Schoonover and I'm a Kendallville resident and I run TaylorMade Glass Systems. I'm R.J. Roos, lived in Kendallville for 25 years and I'm with Campbell Fetter Bank. I'm Jim Goodwin. I'm retired. <laughs> I'm and I'm Dr. Jerry Jansen, local chiropractor. Um, this all started in the basement of Weibel's some years ago in 2001 as an empty nester project. I asked my wife if it was okay to restore a motorcycle. She's like, whatever, keep me out of your hair. Mm -hmm. So we started out with this bike, this green Scrambler CL360, and it turned into one of the friends when we were walking. He said he had one like it. I offered to help restore it. Before it was over with, we the neighborhood started showing up with motorcycles, all pretty much empty nesters. Their kids were going to college, gone to college, and it kind of developed from there. And this all started with CL360 Hondas. We had help from Weibel's. John Pierce allows us to be down in the basement. The, uh, it's worked out very well through the years. Hayden Honda's been very helpful to us and a few other places around. Started out with this bike. We ended up with three others eventually, just like us. We have four scramblers going, and then some project bikes. In the meantime, Dave Hunter, through Rotary Club, I met Dave, and he had an old bike that he had left at a previous place, an old, uh, it'll, it's upstairs, we'll see it later, the window of Weibel's, but it's, it's an old uh, Honda Dream. And I said to Dave, let's restore it. He says, really? I said, yeah, let's go get it. So we went, we picked it up, we brought it back, and Dave started on that bike. It just kind of exploded from there to where now we've done, and I'll look at the guys as I asked this, 12 or 14 bikes oh, yeah. now? There have been 17 bikes. 17 bikes and a lot of bikes that have done it. And a lot of them have been Honda, the majority of them. And the most classic bike we've done in the Honda line has got to be the Honda Dream that David restored. It's beautiful. Beautiful bike. And then uh, there's been a few others. And so the British Invasion. We had the British like Invasion this year, absolutely. Across, right, the 67 BSA now. We're just finishing up. Mm -hmm. A lot of fun. A lot of neat bikes. And then one thing that came out of this is that we had parts bikes left over. And we have, there are a lot of talents in our group. Um, some of us are good at talking, that'd be me. But we have some, John's very familiar with engineering. Um, Bob does well with graphics and things like that. Everybody brings something to the table. And we're just through the, we've developed, well, we, these old bikes that we had, the parts bikes for our Honda Scramblers, we have decided to look into some cafe work doings. And a cafe bike is a bike that in, British, in Great Britain and Europe, they were building cafe bikes when they were building choppers back in the 1960s and 70s. And so we'll show you some cafe bikes for our little clip here is done. So. Okay, yeah, this is uh, one of the projects. This is very symbolic of the way that we do most of them. This particular bike happens to be for the American Cancer Society. We've donated our time and efforts, and we've had a lot of donations of uh, some of the services to put this bike into tip-top shape, fully restored. Basically, we take the bike, we strip it down to the bare frame, and we have the frame sandblasted, painted, uh, refurbish the wiring harness and then we just start the reassembling process. Over here by RJ you see the engines fully dismantled. Uh, this particular engine we went in, we're putting new rings in it, uh, putting new cams in it, uh, clean up the valves and all that. Uh, pretty symbolic of, of what we would do on typically any of our projects. This particular one, it's the first time we've done something for a uh, charity organization. We're very proud to do this for the Cancer Society. It's a CL450 Scrambler Honda 1974. Uh, it's uh, going to be a very nice bike. It's a very limited uh, production run bike, so it's a very collectible bike. So it's going to be very, very nice when we get done. Like uh, all the services have been donated to us, Butch Lash has helped us out with some painting. Uh, Dave's Dave painting. bike with Dave's painting in uh, Leado. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, Taylor Made Systems, the company I work for, donated. Uh, a little bit of money for the restoration, plus we've had uh, Franke plating down in Fort Wayne donated the plating for all the nuts and bolts, and then we're working with Reckon plating on the chrome plating. It's not back yet, but as soon as it hits, we'll get busy <laughs> on that. So that's one of our favorite jokes, where's the chrome? So <laughs> One thing uh, we do is we take lots of pictures. Yeah, take pictures of the bike, because when you go to reassemble, you say, where does this go again? <laughs> and so over on the computer, we have all the pictures lined up, and we can mm -hmm. assemble it.
Except the one we really need. That, that one's <laughs> never that there. That photo's never there. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, everyone <laughs> tips in. No one really backs down from anything. I mean, all the guys here will jump in and do all the work. I mean, we don't really have a specialist. We just all kind of do it, and we help each other and support each other. Uh, the next step would be, like you see the bike behind here, which happens to be Jim Goodwin's, and it's a 550 Honda, but the uh, process is still... This bike represents sort of the next step up from uh, just the engine and the frame situation. It's probably a couple of months away from being complete. It's a CB550, 1977. It was basically a pile of junk when we got it, and uh, with the help of everybody here, everybody's pitched in a little bit. And, and worked on it and uh, still has a few things to do including the paint and the electrical as you can see hanging out. Um, it's built in a style of a street tracker a little bit different than the, than some of the cafe racers that the other boys have put together but um, we're uh, hoping that when it finishes it up it's going to really be a beauty. So That's good. Right here is a 1971 Honda CD750. This bike came out of a barn covered with old lawnmower parts, beer cans, cases. Uh, it took us 10 minutes just to find it buried in a barn. I traded the guy for a case of Budweiser. It didn't look anything like this when we started. Uh, we've done everything here, all the paint, all the rebuilding, the engine rebuild. And the last thing left is some upholstery on the seat, and it'll be on the street this summer. This one here represents the British invasion we talked about. This is a 1967 BSA Thunderbolt 650. And I had a BSA back in the 80s, and so I was on the search a couple years ago for a BSA. And Jerry actually found it for me down in Indianapolis. This bike was red before, well, it was all kinds of colors, but um, it was in the pits of the Indy 500 being traded from pit crew to pit crew for favors and things like that. So I finally got a hold of it and we did a complete restoration on it and uh, now it's ready to roll this spring. Hey, that's not your stuff. I didn't see the reason to bring it down. Actually, I want to rebuild the cars this year. Still yeah. say that stuff. I want to do the design cars. This is an interesting bike. It belongs to Tom Hollinger. And the interesting part about it is, is that when Tom ordered off eBay, it came with a sissy bar, which seems kind of strange because these bikes were scramblers. They were off-road bikes. They had a sissy bar. And I, one day I walked down. The bike was completely done. I said, well, what's up, Tom? He's cleaning the sissy bar. Completely done. Cleaning it up. And it's off the bike. And I said, what's going on? He goes, well, I just like clean this up a little bit. I, he said, I'm going to take some pictures and then maybe put it on. Well, how do you remember your bike? He goes, with the sissy bar. I said, Tom, let's put it on. He goes, okay. He doesn't have a picture of it without the sissy bar. What happened was, it came along the story. One day he drove it home, and his wife says, do you have room for a motorcycle? Mommy says, hop on, baby. They dated with his motorcycle. <laughs> and that's how he remembers his motorcycle. That's why it had a sissy bar. <laughs> This is a 1965 Honda Dream. Honda entered the cruiser market between 1959 and 1969 and made these Honda Dream 305s. This particular bike was uh, purchased in 1978 by my wife's uncle uh, from a guy who owed him 350 bucks and he called him a deadbeat and went ahead and took the bike from him. Well, it sat in the, in the barn until I went ahead and found it in 1995 and then it sat in my garage for another 10 years until we restored it. Uh, this represents a showroom condition of mint condition of a 1965 Honda Dream 305. Again, in the 1960s and 70s when they were building choppers in the United States, in Europe they were building cafe bikes, and the idea was to race from one cafe to another. Well, what they would do is they would try to lighten the bikes as much as they could, faster bikes. So they start taking all the hardware off, all the fancy chrome stuff. Well, the seats are the distinguishing feature of these bikes, and that's kind of what makes it look like a cafe bike. It has a bubble seat. And so what we did with the help of Ken Baranowski from Legonier has a fiberglass firm, they taught us how to make a mold, and we molded our own seats. And so in the end, we've made probably eight or ten of these seats, and we've given a few away and that type of thing besides our own bikes. But that's the core of a cafe bike is the seat. It really makes the, it really makes the bike distinguishable that way. This itself is called the Barnstormer. Again, it was a parts bike that we had left over. And, um, the Barnstormer, I just like the idea of, uh, 
uh, it came out of a barn, and that's where it came from. We found the logo somewhere, and um, we had affordable signs help make the logos for us. We could put them on our tanks, then we clear-coated them into the paint job. Um, our friend Dave Rotker, that internet guy, makes the gauge spaces for us, and he's customized the gauge spaces now to where they put my Barnstormer logo right into the gauge face. They've been a lot of fun. All the bikes, we're just kind of like tweaking them a little bit and fancying them up, and again, as Jerry mentioned on his Barnstormer bike, uh, Tweety here has a lot of the same characteristics. One of the things that we came up with is what color to paint these bikes. We want something bold, so we use Melissa's shirt here as our palette to pick our colors from. So if you notice, we have all the colors in here that we've used. So Melissa was very helpful and instrumental in our color picking of our book. Okay, and Tweety, uh, TWA is the acronym for Tweety with Attitude, and the little face here. Again, Affordable Signs fixed us up, clear coated into the paint. Uh, uses our standard seat that we used. Uh, the pipes are very similar to the Barnstormer. Uh, again, the same custom gauges. We used uh, bar in turn signals on this one. Just a few customizing touches, again, using the characteristics of each of our own personalities. Uh, one of the big jokes I had was I have a red engine and red nipples on the wheels of my spokes. So. Those were kind of the big jokes for Tweed. This is Trogdor the Burninator. Uh, it's more of a rat rod. It works with a very minimalist look, flat black. I like to call it light, loud, and menacing. Maybe the loudest of the bikes. Uh, we named it Trogdor the Burninator because this bike had been in a fire at one time. We bought it for a front, front end brake system. Uh, and then we used the rest of it to rebuild here. Uh, it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun, uh, it's between it's my sons and I, and uh, that's all I have to say about it. Sure. This bike is the last of the uh, cafe bikes that we built before getting into the bigger ones, which is 750 that was downstairs. This is called uh, Kamikaze. It's my son Paul's bike. When you're uh, between law school years, uh, he had he was living with us at home and working in Fort Wayne. And he uh, we spent the summer putting this one together. It's a CB 404. It's a four cylinder. It's got the four pipes that go into one. Um, it's, he liked the idea of just taking the tank, just sanding it out and clear coating it. That's exactly what we did. He liked the rising sun as it's a Japanese bike. And again, we call it the Kamikaze. Um, our friend, uh, the internet guy, Dave, he went ahead and made our gauges for us uh, so they can tie it all together. It's been a lot of fun. And it's a, it's a nice quick bike and it's been in Indianapolis and uh, down to the MotoGP as a spectator. A lot of fun.